Guys, I'm really happy to welcome to the podcast Maria Bayo. Um, Debbie and I both follow Maria on social media. We see her comments, we see her videos, and we long wanted to bring her on the podcast. This is such a brave and admirable young person. And uh, she was born and raised in Venezuela. Uh, at the age of 17, she fled her native country to come to America. And she's the CEO and co-founder of a new group called America's Momentum, which as I understand it, is basically aimed at disinfecting young people from the socialist virus. Uh, Maria, welcome, great to have you. Um, Debbie and I are both fans. Uh, and I wanna start by talking about, you know, how you learned, not from a book, but from experience about socialism. So let's talk about your life in Venezuela, sort of when you were a kid. This, this is Venezuela in the old days in which you grew up, as you say, in a middle-class family. Tell us a little bit more about that. Well, thank you so much for inviting me. As a kid, life in Venezuela was easy. We didn't have any problems. We kids could actually play outside of the, on the streets. We could talk to our neighbors. We could have a normal life. Uh, suddenly, uh, one day I was going from my house to my neighbor's house. And then I see these people coming in a bicycle. And one of the guys had a gun and he was like, give me your phone. I had my phone on my hands and I had my laptop, my backpack. That's when I started noticing that things were not good in the country. My mom started working in politics. She was the secretary of the mayor in my hometown. And I remember one day I asked my mom, mom, why people do not support Chavez? And that's what my mom told me. Chavez is not doing good things. As, as a kid, you don't understand politics, but when your parents tell you that, you know that there's something wrong. Um, I started digging, asking questions. I then I realized that my grandparents have voted for Chavez. My grandparents used to work for the petroleum company in Venezuela. And I remember my grandparents will tell me, we have to vote for Chavez. If we don't vote for him, we're gonna lose our benefits. We're gonna lose our jobs. Um, after that, I got so involved in politics because of my mom. Then at the age of, age of 16, I started doing politics. I started doing campaigns against Chavez. My thing was, if I do something for my country, if I actually help my country, if I actually do campaigns and we win, I will be able to stay at home with my family, I don't have to leave to another country. Sadly, that didn't happen. And when I graduated from high school, I immigrated to the United States. Let's talk a little bit about why it didn't happen. Was it because the socialist government, which actually, uh, Debbie says this as well, came originally to power as the result of a free election, but nevertheless began to uh, take over the courts overrun the constitution, undermine the procedures of, of separation of powers, checks and balances, democracy itself. So by the time you were on the street, in a sense, nothing could be done. They had all the power. The system was rigged against you. Yes, that's what people don't understand. When socialist government have the power, they will take control of everything. Sadly, the government had control over the elections. So it didn't matter who won. Maybe Chavez won. Maybe uh, the guy that rang against Chavez won. We don't know. But since the government had control of all of that, and actually the people that counted the vote was with the government, they could tell you Chavez won, Maduro won, and there was nothing else to, to, that we could do. Um, now, when I was growing up, Maria, in India, you know, there's one corrupt government after another, and my family has had, by and large, a sort of a, these guys are all bad guys kind of view, a pox on all their houses, so to speak. Uh, but in your case, you came to the understanding that this just wasn't a bad sort of third world style government or a bunch of thugs that have taken over, that there was a destructive ideology behind it called socialism. How did you wake up to that phenomenon? Um, it was when I started understood about socialism when I started growing up. I mean, at the age of 10, you don't understand, you don't know anything about politics, but because of my mom was working in politics, I kind of started asking her questions. I started reading books. I started looking at what was happening in my country. I came to realize that there was something really wrong when I had to do a line of hundreds of people to be able to get into the supermarket and get one thing. That's when I realized that I didn't want to live that life. I didn't want to continue in Venezuela. I didn't want to grow up and not have the freedom that other countries could give me like the United States. So when I came to the United States, I left my country 
it was because I was looking for freedom. I was looking for a better future. I was looking for a better education. And that's what the United States has given me. The United States has given me the opportunities that my home country never done for me. When we come back, I want to talk to Maria about her experiences in America, the uh, perhaps to her very surprising popularity of socialism, particularly among young people. Why is that? What is the socialist illusion that, uh, in her experience, was discredited by reality? We'll be right back. <laughs> 